We'll go ahead and call the um, Tell City Board of Public Works and Safety to order. Um, <coughs> put our agenda up here for everybody. I do not have any additions or deletions or changes to the agenda, uh, but there are none. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve by Gerald. Do you hear a second? Second. Second by John. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Agenda stands approved. Uh, next item on the agenda is the presentation of our minutes from our June 7th. If you haven't had a chance to review those, uh, please do so now. You should have a copy of those in your folder and they're also up on the projector. Motion to approve minutes as presented. We have a motion made by John to approve. Do you hear a second? I wasn't here, but I'll second it. All right, second it by Gerald. <laughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes stand approved. Um, next item on agenda is comments of citizens. At this time, if there are any citizens uh, that would like to make any comments, please uh, come up to the microphone here. State your name and address for the minutes. Okay. Hearing none, we'll move on. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, if you could please come up to the microphone here, uh, state your name and address, please, for the minutes, and we'd be happy to uh, see what we can do for you. Uh, Ronnie Hagman, 1634 13th Street. And I was uh, wanting to see about getting a four way stop put there, 13th and Winkle Reed. Okay. That's where that trail cord is, mm -hmm. and everybody coming from 66. You know, to cross 13, they got to get halfway out in the street before they can see if anybody's coming because the, the trailers are so close to the road, and plus all the cars in front, you can't see nothing coming. Okay. So we've been there over six years now and seen a lot of pretty close having wrecks, you know. So, I so think uh, 13th way, and Winkle Reed? Yeah really help to have a four-way stop there. All right. um, Ronnie, what, what the procedure is, actually we'll, ha we'll have our chief of police come out, they'll do an assessment of the area and come back with a recommendation. We can actually set up a, uh, we have a digital sign that actually can do it, the speeds involved in it and okay. people running stop signs. So they'll kind of see what, what the situation is there yeah. and then they'll report back to the Board of Public Works for consideration. Then. Yeah, because that's four blocks straight, no stops, you know, because then the track gets pretty, while well, sometimes through there. It can. Yeah. Um, if it becomes an issue where the stop sign's not recommend uh, there we can actually have an officer set out there and issue citations to those speeding. Okay. Um, as another option too. Okay. So. Okay. Well, I appreciate it, Ronnie. Thank you for coming. Any other comments from citizens? Okay. We'll move on to the next item, and that is department head reports. Uh, we'll start off with wastewater. We have Chris Toothman. Chris, if you want to please come up, I'll have your report up on the screen for everybody there you go and then I'll have your pictures when you're ready for those all right thanks mayor board um, in the collection system uh, since we last met uh, we did finish that sewer main replacement uh, the alley is usable now uh, we do have a little bit of concrete work uh, curbing and I think we kind of uh, did a little bit of demo on one of them's uh, homeowners uh, driveway so we'll be putting that back together just a little touch up and uh, here in the near future, we'll, we're going to look into getting that paved. Okay. Or I think we might partner with Ohio Valley Gas on that. So, because they got to do some work in the area as well. So, <clears throat> hopefully, I'll, they can share the cost with us. Um, there is a uh, Ohio Valley Gas, when they were doing some more camera work, they did find a, another issue uh, right there by the high school on Fulton. So, we will. Uh, we did install a manhole, and I think that's the, yeah, there's the pictures there. Is that just there? Is there three pictures? Yeah, a whole lot going on right there. Yeah, so <clears throat> we never did have access to it, so now that we put the manhole in, that'll. That is a whole lot going on there. Yeah. I've never seen anything quite like that. <laughs> Neither. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. We got four pipes coming in there, looks like. Yeah. yeah. At every angle. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. And um, we also have the sinkhole on the uh, 
14th and Jefferson, we have it barricaded off. It's kind of in a turn lane, so it's kind of dangerous. So we'll get to that as soon as possible as well. <clears throat> but we do, we are aware of it. So uh, nothing in stormwater, uh, nothing down at the plant. Um, for the flood wall, June 7th, a couple weeks ago, we did finally have the the tow drains and the pipes going under the flood wall video. This is supposed to be done every five years. It hadn't been done since 2012. So those of, uh, have you had a chance to? Mm -hmm. the, the Popeyes video? Yeah, mm -hmm. Popeyes, yeah. Yep. So those have also been sent off to the Corps of Engineers and we're still waiting on results for the inspection uh, and the flood wall pipe inspections as well. So can't wait to hear back from them. You've also got a Cinco still at Humboldt, right by the post office, right? That you're going to, that's yes, on the yeah, list. Yeah, it's on the list. Sure. And then there's one that you just, I brought up to attention today that a resident talked back about on the Greenway Green. Trail. Mm -hmm. And so you did make that repair. You you showed us the pictures of it, but it's it's back. Yeah, it's back. So It's further underneath the asphalt than we went the first time. Right. So, so that'd be something you're working on, just yeah. so everybody knows. That's uh, all I have, I think, for this week. Gerald or John, do you have any crest, uh, questions for Chris? What's a toll drain? It's a drain that's supposed to keep the water away from, you know, just off the way. Like your foundation of your house just okay. to, carries the water away. We don't have a whole lot of them, so. Okay. Well, if there are no other questions, thank you very much, Chris. Next up, we have uh, Street Commissioner Pat Baumeister. Thank you, Mayor and Board. Uh, don't have a whole lot. This last couple of weeks, last couple of weeks, the. Uh, Trash department, uh, men hauled off 72.58 tons of trash. Uh, the street department's been working on mowing, of course. Uh, we got behind on uh, our big city uh, cleanup uh, week there. We had to do that. Uh, so the weeds really took off on us. We're trying to get caught up on that. Uh, Windy Creek and uh, different uh, properties around town. Uh, mowing out there the limb stack and the old uh, dump out there. We have to mow that area. and. Uh, I think we're finally getting it back to where it needs to be. And then, then we really have to start hitting the um, gutter pans to step in town really hard. I know the weeds are getting uh, out of control. We need to work on them and maybe do some spraying and stuff. Uh, other than that, um, our uh, summer help has been doing really well. I mean, they was a great help on the uh, the big trash uh, uh, cleanup. And uh, they, they've been going down to Windy Creek and uh, doing some weed eating the older uh, kids have and uh, the younger ones have been doing uh, curb painting. I don't know if anybody's seen them on Washington. We've been painting curbs on Washington and since we get done there I think we're going to jump over and maybe do Pesalazzi or one of them other ones and uh, trying to get trying to get those caught up. Uh, other than that that's that's all I've got. We actually had a resident comment today how nice the curb painting is looking. Good. So that's, that's what, what we want. Here, guys. Thank we want you. the city to look good. We appreciate it. Gerald or John, any questions for Pat? Uh, Pat, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, next up, we have uh, Fire Chief Greg London. Thank you, Mayor. In our department, uh, we have a tradition that we've carried on for several years of uh, our members being uh, members of the Indiana Volunteer Firefighter Association. Uh, with that tradition, when, when they retire from the department, whether it's at the age of 65 or 20 years of service, uh, our members through donations and fundraisers uh, pay that members dues to this organization for the entire time that they they're still alive um, and all the time that we've had that and, and have done that we haven't had any uh, members reach the 50 year mark and that that's kind of a earmark through the IVFA that it's a it's a milestone with the persons having 50 years in that service so uh, about two weeks ago, we actually had a meeting uh, through uh, our department members and the IVFA chairman for the district out of Huntingburg actually came and gave Denny Kessens, our retired chief, a 50-year gold card. Um, we knew it was coming, but wasn't for sure the date. It was mid-year, uh, 1971, when he joined the department. So he got to uh, receive his gold card, and his membership will be paid from now till the time he passes away. So. That's the first one I can remember, and I've been around since I was a little kid, you know, the department, that's, so. That's phenomenal. That's uh, 50 years is a pretty good amount of time, so. I would say so. Yeah. Gerald, you probably, you started in the volunteer fire department for 
a number of years. Do you remember anything like that happening before? No, no, I have not. Just, not we still pay him, else that. We still pay his from his service too. So yeah, but yeah, the the fifty year mark is is something that you don't see that often. You know, so it, it, it was a big deal to the IVFA. The chairman come down and presented him with the with his go kart. So that's great. Did, did anybody get any pictures or any of that? They did. Uh, it was kind of a short notice thing. So if you get any, send them to me. We'll yeah. put them on our. Facebook I can probably page get and recognize them. them so. That would be nice. Yeah. So thank yeah. you. So. Other than that, uh, everything's going good. Nothing broke down. So that's all we'd like to hear. Uh, Jared or John, any questions for Chief Lenny? No, sir. Thank, thank you, you, Chief. Uh, next up, we have building and zoning. We have Steve Goodson. I do not have a report, Mayor. Okay. Any questions for Steve? Move on to Telsey Electric Carpet, Dennis Dixon. I don't think he could be here. Let's see, I don't have a report either. Okay. Uh, we have Tel City Police Department. We have uh, Chief Lowell. Thank you, Mayor. Um, no written report tonight. I apologize for that. Um, just wanted to give a summary about a detail that we did this past Tuesday. Uh, we just put a press release out on it today. So if you haven't heard about it, uh, you will soon. Um, if you remember back in 2016, we started a, uh, an initiative for uh, drug enforcement. Uh, we got some grant money. Uh, to date, we've had uh, about $130,000 of federal money for uh, drug enforcement. And uh, what that involves is just a, a lot of methodical police work. Uh, we have two guys assigned to um, doing, uh, you know, targeting narcotic investigations and you know, these are the kind of things that we get a lot of calls about. Um, I get a lot of calls from citizens talking about suspicious activity or, or wanting to report drug activity, that type of thing. And, and I, I typically can't talk about it to them. I just tell them that, you know, it's being, it's being dealt with. And um, so this past Tuesday, we did a, uh, a warrant roundup. Uh, we arrested 21 individuals. Um, there were some really serious charges, uh, multiple uh, cases of dealing methamphetamine. Uh, we had some uh, uh, cases that were even more serious than that. But uh, I just want to mention it. It's a, uh, it's a collab collaborative effort. Uh, we had multiple agencies involved with it. And it's one of those things that just has to be done just right, uh, you know, to keep everybody safe. And, uh, you know, it's just real impressive to see it all come together. So uh, I think, um, we figured it up. We've had about 160 criminal investigations uh, over the past five years with this initiative, and the arrests are um, well over 100. So uh, it certainly has paid off. And you know, we, we're kind of noticing that each one of these roundups we're getting a few less each time. And you know, I was talking to the guys this morning about that. That's actually a good thing. You know, we're wanting to deter crime. We're wanting to. Uh, um, hold the uh, drug dealers accountable. So I think it's starting to pay off to be able to do that. So uh, any questions about what took place or? I seen it on Facebook a while ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I wanna applaud you and your department for doing that. You know, it's, it's helping keeping the community safe. It's getting, you know, drugs off the streets, but it's also giving people who were arrested a chance at some help maybe too. You know, yes. recognize they have a problem and can turn their lives around. Because I know one girl, I think she was part of yours a couple years ago. Um, she has turned her life around. She is, you know, drug free now. She's went through things, and now she has a job. And this may be the one thing that saved her life and put her down the right path. So I, I commend you and your officers for everything you're doing. We thank appreciate you. it. All the residents do to keep us safe. So thank you. Thank you. Any thank questions you. for Chief? All right. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Um, Alvy Stiff, Greenwood Cemetery. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. Okay. I've got a flag somewhere for you. Fern ain't giving it to you. Is it still in there? There's a flag for you in there for out there. And I don't have anything from Parks and Rec, so we'll just go ahead and move on to uh, wastewater adjustments. Give me just a second and I'll pull those up for everyone. Uh, myself and Gary did um, look through these and we did not see any um, problems with the, uh, the ones on there. So um, if there are no changes, I'll entertain a motion uh, to approve. So moved. We have a motion made by John to hear a second. Second. Okay. Second by Gerald. Any further discussion? 
Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Wastewater adjustment stand approved. Uh, there is no old business, so we'll move straight down to new business, and that is removal of handicap sign at 923 10th Street. Um, board, this is regarding a resident that had called into the office that had uh, just moved into this location. Is that right, Verna? The, the 923 10th Street. They're moving out. They're moving out. And they're asking to request and have the sign removed. And so since we, we do approve them here, I think it's important that we approve to get it taken down just for the minutes purposes. So um, any questions regarding having that sign removed? I'll make a motion we approve the sign removal at 923 10th Street. Okay. We have a motion made by John here. Second? Second. Seconded by John. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, Pat, will you get with that resident whenever they move out officially? For sure, uh, to take that down, just so they don't still need it for for a few days if they're still there. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Next item under new business is item B, port improvements, and we have Alvin Evans here for that. So, Alvin, if you could please come up here, uh, give me just a second, and I'll have some pictures that will help explain your presentation. All right, it's pulling up, Alvin. So. They all got copies. Uh, there's also a copy projected on the uh, screen there in just a second as soon as it opens up for everyone to see. Just load and slow. And if you want to <coughs> start out, then you can while it's loading. Okay, I'll go ahead and get started. I think uh, the Port Authority is proposing to construct a new river cell at the port that would be more useful than the current, very obsolete and dangerous cell. Um, the existing cell is leaking its interior fill sand and is structurally unsound. The contract would remove the existing cell. The new cell would be located between the barge launchways and the existing cell. This location places it downriver from the existing ramp so it does not infringe on the operation of the ramp where the water is deeper and where it's moved to is <clears throat> the water is deeper and where the barge travel way is far enough from the uh, Indiana shore so the cell operation will not interfere with the barge traffic. The proposed cell is necessary to allow the unloading of barges when the drop river is too low or too high for the usage of the ramp. Additionally, the cell will allow the port to be competitive on more type of cargo than travel by barge, uh, travel by barge than the current ramp is. Perry County Port Authority and City of Tell City will apply for a, this is approved for a USDOT River Infrastructure Grant that will pay 80% of the $2.25 million estimated cost. The first construction group of first group of companies will provide the 20% match by paying in advance the approximately $400,000 match to Tell City Boat Works. Tell City Boat Works rental payments and will pay, sorry, Approximately $400,000 match Tell C Boat Works rental payments in advance for the time period of this amount. The Tell C Ventures, <clears throat> this Tell City um, CB, or I got CBB down here, which is not the CBB. EDC. 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 <laughs> EDC will pay, will continue to receive the per ton payments for cargo transfer from the ramp and sale as they are used for lease payments from the Perry County Port Authority. Tell City has a, will end up with a $2 million improvement to the port along with the removal of an obsolete and dangerous eyesore that will serve the port and boat works for many years to come at no cost. Okay. Board, just to, to touch a little bit on this, um, most of you are probably aware that we do, re we lease that port area to uh, Birch Group, Birch Construction. It's, it's Tell Works and Tell Works. Works. Yeah. Okay. And so when, they, when, they, when we do these leases, it's important to take the, the funds from that and try to reinvest it in that area. And I think that's been a goal over, overall since all this started. And I'll touch more on that after Alvin's report. But um, I did go up there with Alvin along with uh, my administrative assistant, Janice Ackbar. Uh, we did look at the site. Um, as it stands now, that is kind of a an unsightly, dangerous area, and these, this would improve all that. It would add value to the port area. Uh, as you know, the port is very important for economic development in our community, uh, serving multiple of our, of our industries uh, throughout the county. Uh, 
we would get payment in advance from FERC, so that actually shows their commitment and to the community for jobs and growth in the area, which I find uh, to be very uh, exciting. You know, you want to definitely keep that here. So they would be paying their shares of rent in advance. That's just not any money that's going to come out of our account directly now. Uh, so I, I like that part of it. I don't know if any of you have had a chance to drive up or look at it. Uh, if you would like, I'm sure uh, Alvin would be more than happy to take you out there in that, that hop pier that's out there now <laughs> and explain it to you. Yeah. We can uh, walk out on it, wouldn't drive out. Yeah, no, you don't want to drive out there. No, no, I would, I, I would not do that. I was nervous walking out there, so uh, driving would definitely not be uh, the smartest thing to do. <coughs> Any questions regarding this? What Alvin's basically needing is approval to apply for this grant. Region 15, we have uh, Luke Thomas. Uh, he's not here for this, I don't think. But they are going to be there to help us uh, with this grant and administrating it. Yes, it. Yeah, it's a long shot of getting it, but uh, so probably, if you don't ask, you'll never get it. So. Right. Get it, so. And what did you say it's the math US, was? Well, it's a USDOT grant that's for mm -hmm. river improvements and so uh, and uh, for uh, ports and so they make the application to it. And you might have said some of this, but just kind of clarify for everybody. What what will this cell do once it's when it's put in? What what kind of impacts? What what kind of benefits will it have for for the port and and for Furch and everybody in the area? Well, one like I said, one thing it'll be allows to, when the river's real low, they, the barges can't get up to the ramp to unload it, and so you're paying to merge on the barges as they're sitting sitting still, waiting to be unloaded. And then when it's real high, it's saying it's issue is in the rivers too fast or, or just can't get the trucks on and off it's too dangerous to be doing that there at the time and so so the so that period of time you can't unload either then and, and so this will allow that to occur off of the at that time they'll continue most time with the ramp is just faster using the ramp than it is would be the sale anyway when they do the sale are they going to set a crane out there or what, what do they do when they use the sale they'd set a crane on it and it'll be, it won't like be the, the existing cell. They'll be filled in from each side and it'll be, and so that you drive out and come out instead of that. As those who've been there, you back in and pull out on it. But, but uh, then, so that's that. And then there's just product that you just need to reach down with a crane and pick up and, and, and load. And uh, there's, we probably get three or four calls a year. And, and David said he gets, David first says he gets calls also because they know he's there doing it and, and just can't be competitive on it, the pricing of off the ramp. And so but, so he, he thinks we'll be able to pick up more business this way, and I tend to agree with him too. Sounds so. good. Gerald, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, no, I, I'd just like to know what's the status of the road. You know, we've been four out with completing that road okay river river road is uh was it was 2026 or 2023 fiscal year uh, funding so which it wouldn't have been available until uh july 1 2022 and so the design process is still going on we thought it would we'd be completed with the design by now so we could apply been ready for a year earlier if any funding was available had to be but it's not the geotech's taking a lot longer for that than we thought it would and should be, but and so they still got about a month worth of borings to take on the geotech. So we just so when that is so we're intending then this so all plans to be all completed so we'd be ready to bid in July month of July of 2022 when the first time 2026 2023 funding's available. So. Then all the truck driver could go out the new way. Then all trucks would go come in out the new way. Then yes, okay. get them off the so nice street. street. Okay. Then, so yeah. Is your concern with the sewer that runs underneath that road? The uh, sewer. Um, just met with Mayor Terry today uh, to talk about because they've said they would be out of the way in October 2022, and uh, that's the. the Ten is he said that uh, maybe slip a month or something, but it should if it shouldn't affect the uh, construction if we if we happen to bid it in July. That 
takes two months to get to the paperwork and then I mean, it won't be there. The engineers have said that the metal pipe can be left in place by filling with grout. There's enough cover over top of it, so it'll be filled with grout then to, to stabilize it. And so as it continues to rust away, it won't affect the stability of the road. The, the new plastic pipe, uh, that's a decision that needs to be made on what to do with it. So, future. But hopefully, in the, uh, I've, I've asked the engineer to speed up the process, get the plans done so a little far enough along so we all know what the estimated cost is because some of that's on a cost share basis on the, the road itself, the Port Authority was going to do, but there are some other things that are going on with it. That, some cost share to be down. It'll it be concrete. Fine. No, it'll be asphalt. And asphalt. No. I know uh, when the, the Birch Group came to us and started there, they had done everything they stated that they would do. They've done. They've been a real good mm -hmm. employer. Like I said, a very good, good partner. Yeah, real. He's done. I'm wanting to say, Donnie, is it Donnie? No, Donnie's not, David is, the oldest David is running a, the operations up here now. Donnie's still running, is still involved running Corn Island. Corn Island. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But they've, they've, they've done exactly what they told us they've been. Mm -hmm. They've done really well. Yeah. They've done a great job. So you look for some kind of motion there? Yeah, Alvin, they need a motion to allow us to apply for the grant. Um, that's pretty much all they need in that motion. Uh, approve the match process. Yeah, and approve the match using uh, payment in advance for lease. Advance payment of lease. Advance payment of lease. Just there you go. No city money up front. Right. I'll make that motion. We have a motion made by John. Do you hear a second? Second. Second by Joe. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right. Alvin, I'm going to talk just real quick about other improvements at the port, just because then that doesn't really tie into the um, property transfer in Troy. Uh, what we would like to see done, and this is just, I say we, but I and, and a few others, um, as I said, we own the port buildings up there um, on the dry side, what I'm going to kind of focus on, on, on the flood wall there, uh, where the Port Authority offices, there's a large, extremely large warehouse behind it, fenced in area. Um, I would like to see the city use some of the monies that we have in account already that we received from leasing this to make some cosmetic uh, improvements up there, such as uh, painting the, the fence, uh, which we could do that in-house with summer help there. That's no big deal there. Taking millings from when we do our paving to help kind of create a better base of the, the fence in area. The bigger part would be painting of the warehouse and paint and new windows and some more painting in the port building. What I would like, if the board's okay with it, and I don't even know if it needs a motion, is to seek out local contractors and see, get some pricing of what the painting would cost and the windows would cost and the fencing, painting that, that's something we can do in-house. The reason I want to do these improvements, I feel that this is a part of town that needs some revitalization and cleaned up. And if we're going to ask neighbors and other property owners to clean it up, we need to clean up our own backyard first. Um, if you go up there and look, it's, it's not that it's a total mess, but it is in definite need of improvements. Um, we're, we want to see this area grow and, and be cleaned up, and this is one way I think we can do it using funds we have from the leasing of that space. So uh, painting would be the main thing. Uh, windows, the millings, we will have those. That's not no big deal there. Uh, the fence, you know, painting of that, again, would, you know, we can buy local paint here and have summer help do that. That won't take a lot of time. But if you drive up and look, it is, it is, it's in need of work. It hasn't had anything done to that since it was built back when Maxon's in probably the 70s, maybe 60s, I don't know. And uh, I, I think it's our, our goal to, to help revise that area. So uh, I don't need a motion really, I don't think, just go ahead and get prices. Once I get them, I will bring them back to this board to, to seek to hire whoever comes back with some, some prices. I don't think it needs to be bid. I don't think the painting cost is going to exceed that, we hope. We'll see. Let's hope not. If anything, the building. The, the large warehouse is the only thing I can think of that would it, it could. give it the, it's give a, the It's going to take a lot of paint. Bid it. The windows won't. Yeah. Um, the windows busted out. The windows have never been busted out in the office, really. They're, no, they're, I'm talking about the warehouse. Oh, no, no not the, the warehouse. The warehouse don't really have windows in it. Okay. 
Not that oh, I know of. Replace the windows in the office area. Yeah, in the office area, along yeah. the front there. And the yeah. port's going to partner with us on some of that. Uh, so the, the full cost won't be ours. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I just think it's important to revise that area. We're going to do a paving project up in that area next year as things, you know, we're, this is just all part of it. So. It needs it. It does. And so, like I said, I don't need a motion on it. I just want to inform you guys that are important improvements. So any questions on that? No. All right. We're going to move on to next item. Item C is transfer of property, Troy Industrial Park. And Alvin, I'll let you have the floor on this one, too. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Troy Industrial Park, which is uh, the Tell City Industrial Park at Troy, would be the, yeah. the official title of it. Yeah, was that, I'm sorry, that I was, said that wrong. That property was purchased um, many, many years ago under with an EDA grant that the, after uh, General Electric went, tubes went out. So um, that uh, area was uh, purchased and uh, for the industrial park, and then there was a portion of the property that was purchased uh, that's uh, not, that's outside, it's north of the industrial park. If you remember when Jay Trudeau Company had their uh, asphalt plant there, that was before the industrial park was built, and there was some property that was on the north and west of that, of the Rudolph property that, the, that Troy, that Telsey bought, which is property drops off down to the river, not isn't useful for much of anything else. And uh, then automated routing, I mean, not, uh, not automated, uh, American Colloid was built there uh, in 96, the, that brought with in, uh, north of the Rudolph plant. And the fill dirt came out of the area down toward the, uh, Anderson River then to build that fill. So that's the history back there. And that, uh, then in uh, Port Authority, our uh, PCDC bought the property in which the uh, automated routing building was built on, that they're in now is built on, and then across the, the uh, low area behind it and to next to the railroad tracks, that property was bought, was got, was transferred to the Port Authority. And the Perry County Port Authority this in 2019 had an EDA grant in which the uh, area was graded and they put a, a aggregate base down uh, in order for to build a yard area there for a future transloading facility for two different groups. And uh, a new spur was put in at that time. ORG Chem Group, which has uh, been there forever, consolidated recycling before they um, they've been uh, active and uh, their loads of rail they're now shipping finished product out by rail they had been bringing in a few cars before but now they're shipping it out by rail they're, they're really busy at current time and between the activities of, of um, American Colloid and them and just everything else there's there's a, a lot of switching of cars that has to be done, and so you have to have a lot of tracks in order to store cars on. And that's a, right, so right now we're proposing a new rail spurs that, um, that, like I said, one was built with the EDA grant that just came on, and, and that's being well used. And then we're proposing two new rail spurs be built on the west side of the main line. And that's on, Tell, on property that's owned by Tell. Two thirds of the length of it to be on property that Tell City owns, and one third of the length of it is on property that Prairie County Port Authority bought a few years ago on that side of the track. So this 2,500 foot long spur would be servicing all the all the businesses at Troy, and including the current ones, and then the future ones that start using the transfer yards. Then, so um, like that. Hopefully that uh, the Port Authority is requesting that a 40-foot wide strip be uh, a permanent easement uh, on it, on it, or uh, we'd actually purchase it or own that from you, with a 60-foot wide easement along the uh, along it for the construction of the rail bed and, and the spurs at the time that, that that work is done. So, and the easement would go away upon the completion of the track. And uh, so, so we 
like a Port Authority's proposing, I will provide the cost of surveying and attorney fees for the deed of the property and purchase the property for a dollar if that's worked for, for you all. So, mm. so these, the new lines will be, if the tracks here, it'd be over here on the west side. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. Closer to the creek. Closer to the creek, yes. Okay. Yeah. That's this is, this is a there. small, rather small piece of property. They're just wanting a small piece of the larger pie, and I'll, I'll address that after Alvin, we, we are done with this. But this transfer or easement, either way, should, should have occurred years ago under some other transfers that happened back 10 years ago, probably. Yeah. And, and yeah. never, it never did. did. It just, so. Yeah. It was supposed to, and so here, here we are now. They're actually doing it, and they didn't make a, the port didn't make much of a big deal about it because yeah. they weren't needed at that time, and so now here we are. Yeah. But we're, it's not going to cost the city any funds. Of course, like Alvin said, they're going to take care of the survey and the deed and everything. It's just basically transferring it to them, uh, so they can add their rail there, and then we'll be left with the rest of that to. And I'll bring that to this board here next. So. They already own down below. You can't see it in this picture, and I apologize. I couldn't get it to pull up there. That's the track they own there at the bottom. The port already, already yeah, owns that. About a third of the length of the yeah. 2,500 feet. Yeah. This was the if you were out there, it'd be running American Colloid Spur comes in, and it'd be starting just north of American Colloid Spur, going down to where that county kind of road crosses by the Origin Camp Group. And that's where it'd be that length. I'm familiar with, it, with the area. That's it. I'm familiar with that area. Okay. If you, if no one's ever actually went back and looked at this area, it's, it's very interesting. I, I never knew it existed until you drove me around it a year and a half ago, and I learned a lot. I really have a totally new outlook on everything the port does just by seeing some this and other things back in that park that's developed over the years and how great it's been an asset. If you haven't been back there in the last five years, it's changed tremendously. Yeah. Five years ago. So. Well, there's an access road behind American Coley. You come off 545 or you can get back there. There, yes, but that's private owned road by Flash there. <coughs> but but okay. he lets us cross there. But that, so, and, the, uh, and then, but the road into the uh, yard is actually uh, comes off from uh, <coughs> ORG Chem Group between their buildings there by the warehouse there's a uh, that runs back there to the uh, what was the rail ramp there back for the, the ramp railroad tracks for when it was built how many cars can you spot on that time right now we store about 20 20 to 30 depending on the lengths of cars there. But, so on this one here would be valuable for about 40 on each each on each of them Board, uh, any other comments regarding this? If not, we're going to need a motion to um, sell this particular uh, track of property here to uh, the port for one dollar. City attorney overlooked over this, Jeff. And it can be transferred. It, it can be transferred. Uh, um, this is not like your typical transfer at a arm's length to a private buyer. Um, I'm trying to remember. Port, the port's body corporate politics, so it's in essence a government. It's like like a government entity, entity to a right. government entity. It's in um, state. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, the only thing I've got to look at and see if we have to do, do those substantially identical resolutions to finalize it. But I think right now we're just waiting on the survey work and the description. So I'll I'll sort out the details of what we've actually got to do to to legally make the transfer. Um, I think right now, correct me if I'm wrong. It's just asking for permission to move forward with the process. That's, that's correct. Yeah. Yes. I'll make that motion. We allow the transfer of property. Okay, we have a motion made by Jared here. Second? Second. Second by John. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Alvin. Thank you. Uh, just to touch real quick while the board and board's up here. Um, the other remaining property there, I can't remember the acreage. Janice, was it like 40 acres or? Just under 40 acres. You don't see the entire picture of it there on to the right of its cut off there, but you do see the left there. It's my recommendation that we look into two options. 
one, one option is selling it, of course, and I do think we need to sell this. This has no use to the port. This has no use to, to the city. It is pretty much a hillside, so it's undevelopable. So we could sell it to neighboring property owners. Um, it's got a, some timber on it. We could log it and then sell it or sell it with the log on it, whatever. So if this board's okay, I would like to just start looking into options as far as what's what can the city do to get its best value for the property? Either selling it with the timber on it, timber in it, then selling it, whatever. So we need to, just, I just want to explore some options and before we take any action, as far as that goes, I'll bring it back and get you know the approval and the blessing. But there's not a whole lot of good timber on it. There's some white oak and some things like that, but not a, a, a drastic amount. Uh, but How many acres are there? About 40, I think, close to it, 39. So I, I don't know the exact number. I, don't, I didn't bring that up here, and I'm sorry. So that would be from the uh, railroad line going west to the? To the creek, yeah. up to uh, Spencer County. And the north of what they call Solomon Road there. The road will go back in there. Probably, yeah. I don't know the name of the road, but yeah, we'll say, we'll say yes. But I, I just want to get some prices. Um, we'll have to have appraisals and stuff like that done. But, uh, you know, if the city ain't going to use it and has no use for it, and neighboring, you know, the port has no use for it, uh, there's no point in us owning it. Might as well sell it, get it back on the tax row. Uh, it probably won't generate a whole lot of taxes, but it gets it off our liability, gets it off, off gets it off our books. Yeah, we'd have to approach an adjoining there's there's provisions for selling to adjoining landowners yeah. if that if that doesn't look like it's something the adjoining landowner is interested in there's separate provisions for advertising it for sale mm -hmm. um, but we we can do it i've just got it pretty steep back there yeah. that's yeah I, it's it's either it's either hill or floodplain all of that back in there right yeah so just uh i don't really need a, a motion on that i'm gonna i'll get something together but i wanted to update you all so uh, let me switch this to the cancer um, that's all we have under new business, so we'll move down to mayor's report. Uh, I've got a little list here, so I'll just kind of go down through them here. We are finishing up some of the final renderings on the sports complex. We did make some um, additions to it, adding more fields. That was something that came out of the, the public input we had probably two months ago. Uh, so we, we did do that. Uh, we had a meeting with on Windy Creek. Uh, we actually have a meeting this Wednesday. We moved it from last Thursday to this Wednesday. but. John, myself, Gary, uh, Larry even stopped by, uh, Pat and Kevin were all there. We met with a representative from NDOT regarding the creek along Highway 66, uh, their Orchard Hill Drive. Uh, there, that's kind of became a mitigation area. So there's been vegetation and plants planted there. They gave us several recommendations. They're gonna type all that up, send it back to me. Um, I'll take it to this board when we decide well, how, what direction we wanna go with as far as how it's maintained and upkept uh, in the future. I've got a meeting later this week with Century Aluminum. Uh, I've had residents uh, reach out to me concerned about the smokestacks across the river. And so I, I reached out to them and they invited me, uh, the mayor of Lewisport and the mayor of Hallsville, all to go over to the plant uh, to discuss it and, and find out what's going on there so they can issue a statement to our residents and explain to them exactly what that is. So uh, we've got case bolt construction. We have uh, Jeff, I almost said Josh. I'm sorry, I wouldn't insult you like that. No. <laughs> we have Jeff and Courtney Caseboat out there with JK Forever Homes. Um, they're interested in, or they will be, I guess, developing the Highlands uh, right now, but then they're going to be doing the um, Hoosier Heights is their next subdivision. So we did have a meeting on that. There's going to be a TAC committee meeting this uh, Wednesday. Uh, they're going to present some of their plans. I do want to apologize at our last meeting. We kind of had some misunderstandings of things, and, and I don't want to apologize to the case bolts if things were said that really shouldn't have been. We do appreciate your work that you do for the community, and we look forward to seeing this housing complex move forward. Um, one thing this board will have to discuss is the, the sewage situation. Um, there's two options. It could be some voluntary annexation happen. Good. There's hurdles for that, but that's option A. Option B, if that can't happen, which the hurdles could prevent that, would be signing of waivers for remonstrance to get the annexation in the future. So in five, 10, 20 years from now, if things change and we can voluntarily annex that, we can start bringing that all in right away, no problems. So that's B. Uh, we're gonna try for A. And we do have a plan commission meeting this Thursday at 6.30 for a development. Um, is it seven? seven okay, five. sorry, seven o'clock. 
And uh, lastly, Janice and I and Connie will be working tomorrow on our next Community Crossings grant application for paving, since we were unsuccessful in the first round uh, due to what I feel was <laughs> a very minute technicality that just really shocked us all. Something we were totally unaware of. So, any questions regarding mayor's report? Is the uh, planning commission is that up on sixty six? It is. Two eleven. Yes. Seems something. something in the paper. Yeah, I believe that is two eleven, ain't it? Something That's like that. Fine. No, this is the old uh, Pizza Hut location. Uh, demolishing it and building a new facility there. So. Cross from McDonald's. Cross from McDonald's. There on Orchard Hill. At the front of the Used to be Pizza Hut. Used to be Pizza Hut. It was a Mexican, Mexican, restaurant. Was a Mexican restaurant for a while. Got it. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to tear it down. That's that's the plan. So that's that'll be part of our planning commission. So any other questions? All right. Well, that's all I have in our mayor's report. There's nothing else. I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. We have a motion made by Gerald here. A second. Second it by John. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Meeting stands adjourned. Thank you all. Yeah.